For nearly two decades, NVIDIA has stood as the undisputed king of graphics and AI acceleration. Its GPUs power everything from high-end gaming to cutting-edge neural networks. The company's CUDA software stack has become a global standard, and its dominance has only grown with the rise of generative AI. In China, NVIDIA once controlled 95% of the data center GPU market. That level of control created a critical national vulnerability, one the Chinese government has been determined to eliminate. Driven by export bans and a broader push for technological independence, China has shifted its entire strategy. The focus is no longer just on building better chips, it's about creating an entire ecosystem, and that shift is beginning to pay off. In this video, we'll explore how Chinese GPU makers, led by Huawei, are challenging NVIDIA's monopoly, what's working, what isn't, and whether NVIDIA's grip on the global GPU market is truly under threat. But before we go further, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss more deep dives into the future of the space and tech industries. The push to end NVIDIA doesn't mean destroying the company. It refers to China's effort to eliminate its dependence on foreign chips and software for critical computing. The strategy is based on vertical integration, building everything from the hardware to the AI software stack, and compensating for weaker chip performance with bold system-level innovations. Huawei leads this charge. Its Ascend 91B and 91C GPUs, combined with its CANN software stack, have already drawn 665,000 developers. Its latest supercomputing system, the Cloud Matrix 384, links 384 GPUs using optical interconnects to function as a single logical unit. The result is a 300 petaflop system that outperforms NVIDIA's NVL 72 superchip cluster by 67%. While each individual chip is weaker than NVIDIA's best, the system as a whole proves that architectural innovation can offset hardware limitations. Huawei is not alone. Startups like MoreThread and Lisuan Tech are building gaming and general purpose GPUs. Lisuan's G100 aims to match the performance of NVIDIA's RTX 4060. However, while impressive on paper, these startups face major obstacles. Shangdixian, once valued at billions, collapsed in 2024 after burning through over $2 billion in funding. Lisuan, too, is facing financial instability. To overcome manufacturing limitations, Chinese companies are turning to mature process nodes. Huawei relies on Smiki's 7 nanometer technology, which is far behind TSMC's 3 nanometer. Lisuan claims its G100 uses an optimized 6 nanometer node. There's also innovation in other areas. Flight VGM, a project using AMD's V80 FPGA chips, achieved 30% faster inference speeds and 4.5 times the energy efficiency of traditional GPUs. This solution won the Best Paper Award at the 2025 FPGA conference and showcases how China is exploring alternative hardware paths beyond standard GPU architectures. Software remains a critical battleground. NVIDIA's CUDA ecosystem has a commanding lead with over 430,000 developers worldwide. However, Huawei's CANN and Mindspore frameworks are growing quickly. China is estimated to provide 150,000 CUDA developers to the global market. If that talent shifts to domestic alternatives, CUDA could lose one of its biggest assets. The impact of these developments is already visible. Huawei's 91C now delivers 800 teraflops in FP16, four times the performance of NVIDIA's limited export H20 chip, although still three times slower than NVIDIA's top-tier Blackwell GB200. Even so, the shift in market share is real. NVIDIA's data center GPU market share in China has dropped from 95% in 2022 to just 50% in 2025. Huawei has picked up much of that slack. Meanwhile, Chinese cloud companies like Alibaba and Tencent have increased their investment in domestic chips by 69% this year alone. Production yields are improving. In 2025, the yield for Huawei's 91C chips doubled to 40%, with the company now planning to produce 400,000 units. If trends continue, Huawei could dominate over 70% of China's data center market within just a few years. The upcoming 920 chip, expected in 2026, aims to match the performance of NVIDIA's Blackwell architecture, closing the gap even further. But major obstacles remain. China's reliance on Smiki's 7 nanometer process limits performance and energy efficiency. Huawei's cloud matrix system, while powerful, consumes four times more power than NVIDIA's equivalent setup. The software ecosystem still lacks maturity. While CAN is growing, it has only one sixth the developer base of CUDA. Porting existing applications to the new stack is time consuming and expensive. That slows adoption and limits the utility of even the most powerful hardware. Economic pressure is another 
problem. Over 30 Chinese GPU startups have launched since 2019, but funding has dried up following tighter U.S. sanctions. Companies like Xiang Dixian have gone bankrupt, and this one may not be far behind. At the same time, the supply chain still relies on Western tools for advanced processes like vapor deposition and lithography. Full independence is still out of reach. Globally, NVIDIA's dominance remains solid. The company retains 92% of the discrete GPU market for add-in boards, and its Blackwell platform is already powering the next wave of AI models. But even if NVIDIA remains unchallenged internationally, the Chinese market is becoming increasingly close to it. That shift could have enormous consequences. In the short term, NVIDIA stands to lose up to $15 billion annually in Chinese sales. That revenue could instead be used to fund further innovation inside China. Meanwhile, Huawei and others are building momentum. The rise of open source large models like DeepSeek and Quen could help export China's software stack to the rest of the world. If successful, these tools could weaken CUDA's dominance and open new markets for Chinese chips. In the long term, there are two possible outcomes. In the success scenario, China develops advanced chip packaging techniques and eventually reaches 5 nanometers or better nodes. CAN and MindSpore become global AI standards. In the failure scenario, China's ecosystem remains fragmented and production bottlenecks keep NVIDIA at the cutting edge. That failure could see the US extend its lead in critical technologies like 6G and quantum computing. Whatever happens, the global market is heading toward a bifurcation. Countries will be forced to choose between US and China aligned AI stacks. Sanctions that were meant to weaken China may instead create a parallel tech world, one where NVIDIA is locked out out of one of the biggest and fastest growing markets. Ultimately, China may not end NVIDIA's global dominance, but it is well on its way to ending NVIDIA's monopoly within its own borders. Huawei's strategy of ecosystem integration is the strongest threat NVIDIA has ever faced. And with each new chip, each software breakthrough, and each investment in domestic infrastructure, that threat grows. If this trend continues, the future of AI acceleration will no longer be dictated by a single company or a single country. Instead, it will Will reflect a fractured global landscape where geopolitical lines shape technological capabilities. For NVIDIA, the challenge now isn't just technical, it's geopolitical. And for China, the path to GPU independence is no longer a question of if but when.